Let me get you in the moment. This is the brand new Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4 Mark II macro. And there are a couple of things that get me really excited about this lens that we're gonna talk about. And the reason I'm starting this video here, even though on this video, I'm gonna be bringing you with me to one of the biggest sporting events in Canada, the Labor Day Classic between Saskatchewan and Winnipeg, which I'm filming for the CFL, is because one of the things that gets me the most excited about this lens is the size you can see here the brand new lens, the Mark II. And here is the original 70 to 200 millimeter F4, which is quite an old lens. And there's a very notable size difference. And that's because the barrel on this one, which is the old version, the Mark I, zooms within the lens. And the barrel on this one, the new version, when you undo the lock switch, which is located right here, extends and gets quite a bit longer than the original lens, but also gets very compact and is good for travel and is weather sealed and everything, by the way. Me traveling with a bunch of camera gear, going to a game in a different province for one day and then coming right back, wants to keep my load light, wants to pack as few bags as possible, wants to get as much stuff as I can into one camera case. And this lens allows me to do that. Another thing that I'm really excited about, this lens is a macro lens. So you know that thing where you're filming someone and you're on a telephoto lens and then they run really close to you and all of a sudden you can't focus on your shot and it's ruined? No more with this lens. If someone runs at you, it'll be an extremely tight shot at 70 mil, but you can see right in here, the minimum focusing distance, 0.26 meters at 70 mil or 0.42 meters at 200 mil. You can get an extreme close up on this lens that's in focus and looks sharp and is very usable as a cool creative angle. So I'm really excited about those two things. I also wanna test the sharpness, the focus breathing, all these typical things that we want with a lens in the field and what better environment to do it in than a huge football game with 40,000 screaming fans and a bunch of pressure on all the players and a bunch of pressure on me to get the shots. But hey, it's gonna be fun. So I'm gonna finish packing up. I'm so happy you can't see the floor right now. It's actually a disaster. There is so much stuff down there. And then we're going to head to Regina. Yeah. So finally got to the game. I'm actually a little bit early here because our hotel check-in wasn't until like 3 p.m. and the game starts at five. So here we are at the stadium shooting scenics. But I kind of want to go over what I'm using to film today. I've got the FX30, which is fully rigged out with the Andy Cine A6 Plus, which is a 4K monitor, the Rode NTG3. And this is the camera that I'm going to be using, the 70H200 F4 Mark II on today. So I can use that crop sensor to get a little bit further than this, which is the 35 to 150 from Tamron that I did a video on that you can watch up here. And this is gonna be on the FX3. I'm currently filming on the A7 IV, 20 mil. I might use a 20 mil for a couple stadium establishing shots, which we're going to film right now, but probably not that much. And just for this bit, I'm actually gonna move this 7200 onto the FX3. And then before the game starts, I'll switch those lenses back. Also, someone we haven't met, this is Scott. He has edited half the videos on this YouTube channel <laughs> this summer. So big shout out to Instagram down here. And he also works with us at the CFL and we're filming this massive game today. Appreciate you, Peter. So thoughts on the 7200 F4 Mark II macro so far. Macro capabilities, great. The zoom ring is very smooth. I like all the different function options that we have. The autofocus is quick and snappy. The focus breathing is minimal. I did find that the focus through though is very short. So sometimes I have a tough time with manual focusing, nailing exactly what point I want to stop focusing at. I missed it by a tiny bit. But I think this is something I'll get used to. I just need to use it a little bit more. I have only been using it for an hour. We're gonna keep on shooting the stadium because as you can see here, it's absolutely massive. And then we'll keep on uh, doing the rest of the game and I'll keep on giving you my thoughts on this one. Couldn't be better believe. This my moment. I said it's my moment. 
First impressions, just walking around with this lens on the field as I film, it is much lighter than the original. This is very easy to handhold and shoot some good stable footage with, and it's very comfortable as well. I just got back from the game and wow. Did we ever pick a good game to come test this lens on? That was the game of the year. 40,000 people going absolutely nuts. An overtime thriller with the home team winning. I'm just back at the hotel and having a decaf because I cannot get enough of the taste of coffee. And going through all my footage here, kind of melting it and getting it all together for the video we're gonna produce. And I just wanna reflect a little bit on my experience with the 7200 F4 Mark II Macro and emphasis on macro, because boy, did I take advantage of that. I made sure to get a couple of shots of the grass and just like little things like that to kind of test it out. But I also got super close at a player's eyes. And that is not a shot I would be able to get with the older 70-200. But with this lens, it's a new kind of shot that I can start adding to my arsenal, incorporating into my videos. And I think the thing that I like the most about the new 70-200 F4 Mark II macro is the peace of mind that you get. I felt like if someone was coming at me or a play was happening and it was developing in a way that wasn't ideal for a telephoto lens, I could just hang in there. I didn't have to move. I didn't have to try to step away from the play. I didn't have to run around. I could just stay where I was, keep the shot framed up well, and no matter how close the player gets to me, like unless it's to the point that they actually hit me, which is a whole other problem that a lens isn't gonna solve, then I can just hang in there, get the shot as they come very close to me, and it won't like focus hunt, it won't go out of focus, it'll just be very tight, and then the action or the subject that I'm filming will move past me, and I'll continue filming them when they're further away, and I won't lose focus the entire time because the minimum focusing distance is so close in this lens. Whereas with the other lens, the older 70-200 f4, if something was coming at me, I was panicking to move back. That was huge for me. And I didn't expect it to be that big, but it gives me a lot more flexibility when I'm shooting. And it just made the whole process tonight more enjoyable. This was for sure the most fun I've had of the game. It's some of the best footage I've captured. And wow, what a lens. I really like it. I'm very tired right now and I'm probably missing some stuff and want to kind of consolidate all my thoughts into a nice package to wrap this video up. So let's go home, back to Toronto, and we'll do that. So at the end of the day, do I think that you should buy this lens? I would say that this is outright better than the 70-200 f4 Mark I that I have been previously using although I still love that lens. And this is even a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the 70-200 f2.8 Mark I. That's the old one, and it's significantly cheaper than the 70-200mm f2.8 Mark II. 
So if you're in the market for a 70 to 200 lens, you don't have one yet, or you're looking to get one with a constant aperture, one of these like white colored ones that are professional, quote unquote. I strongly think you should consider this one for what you're gonna pay for that type of lens. This thing is feature packed. It's easy to carry with you and you're gonna have a lot of fun shooting with it. I had a lot of fun shooting with it and you don't need to spend $3,000 to get it because some of the brand new F2.8 lenses in this focal range are incredibly expensive. And unless you're doing something that absolutely demands that, like photography of subjects who are moving quickly or in poor lighting conditions, then you might not wanna spend that amount of money. Should you upgrade to this if you have the 7200 F4, like the first one? That's debatable. If you have a specific need for macro shots, maybe you do wildlife and you wanna be able to get right up close to something when it gets near you and get an insane shot of a tiny insect or something, then of course, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to this. This is gonna be amazing for you. If you're doing sports and action and you're not getting subjects who are tiny and coming close to you and you don't have like an explicit demand for macro, then I would say it's not necessary to upgrade but it's more of a nice to have type of thing. So by all means, rent it, try it out for yourself, see if you have as much fun with it as I have and if you actually have a real need for it. And if you do, then maybe you sell your old lens, spend it every five, 600 bucks and get this new guy. But whether you choose to get it or not, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis and would love to have you around for that. All the shots you saw at the football game there were colored with my football video LUT pack, which is the LUTs that I use to get all of my footage looking crispy when I'm filming field sports like football or soccer. So if you wanna pick that up, you can check it out at the link in the description. If you have any questions, go drop them in the comment section. I'd love to have a chat with you down there. And that's gonna be all for this one. So until next time, peace.